Welcome to this symposium on One Health for the Real World. I'm really delighted to see you all here and to see so many people in this room. This is the culmination of a bit of a journey over the last few years, um, but also, I think, a meeting that should prefigure a really important future. My name's Melissa Leach. Um, I'm director of the Institute of Development Studies in Sussex. I'm a social anthropologist. And I've also been leading with colleagues over the last few years the Dynamic Drivers of Disease in Africa Consortium, um, who, whose final conference this is, but it's also something more than that. This symposium um, is about some of the biggest global challenges that we face as people on a planet. It's about the challenges of human health. It's also about the challenges of environmental change and of bringing those things together in a way that can ensure well-being for people and ecosystems into the future. I think over the last um, couple of years, we've seen some dramatic events which have shot these challenges into the headlines and particularly focused the world's attention on zoonoses, on diseases that transmit from animals to people. So we saw the Ebola crisis in West Africa unfolding from the end of 2013. Um, started as a zoonotic disease and then spread very, very rapidly, human to human, from local origins to a global pandemic. And now the world is struggling to come to terms with the uncertainties and the possible impacts of the Zika virus in Latin America and potentially beyond. These are epidemics, pandemics, that are, have had and are having devastating impacts locally, but they're also proving a wake-up call for global governance around health. And they've given, I think, renewed attention and kind of headlines to much longer established discourses and ideas about One Health, or the other term that's often been used, eco-health. The idea, supported um, by certain scientists, but also by big international agencies, the WHO, FAO, OIE, and others, that actually we don't need a holistic approach to thinking about human health, animal health, ecosystem health, planetary health. And this is a very nice rhetoric. It's a holistic rhetoric that implies that we can and should connect all these things up. And somehow, if we do in an effective way, all will be well. It's, it's a, a discourse that implies solutions, that implies a different way of thinking and of practicing. And this symposium is about One Health, but it also goes beyond, quite deliberately, some of those rhetorics in a number of different ways. Firstly, it goes beyond the global headlines. <coughs> so we will be hearing in this symposium um, about some of these big emerging diseases that have the capacity to cause pandemics and threats. But we're also going to be looking at the relationships between people and their well-being, wildlife, livestock, disease, and ecosystem services in some very local settings where actually the impacts and the relationships we need to care about don't necessarily hit the headlines but are quietly devastating people's lives and people's livelihoods. The conference in this respect marks the end point of a four-year journey um, of the Dynamic Drivers of Disease in Africa Consortium which has been a partnership of 19 organisations which has focused in on these challenges as they've played out in a diversity of African settings. And we'll be hearing some of that case study work and the cross-cutting work across it, but also looking at a variety of other cases. And these, I think, will bring to light some other moves that take us beyond the comfortable rhetoric of One Health. One is about the difficulty of doing this. One Health implies and asks for a breaking down of silos. It asks for scientists and policymakers who deal with human health, animal health, ecosystem health to come together and work together in new ways. But as we found in our own consortium, and as I think many of you in this audience may have found and that we'll be discussing in the conference, doing this is really difficult. It requires overcoming barriers of language, of hierarchy, of disciplinary assumptions. It requires a kind of humility and a form of listening, which isn't always comfortable. So I'm hoping that um, this conference will also be uncomfortable, that it will challenge us all, and that we can have some really candid debate, as well as a resort to the comfort of holism. 
I think we'll also hear from the case studies from our consortium and from other contributions um, that many of the situations we're dealing with are really complex and they're beset by some real uncertainties, some things that are intractable <coughs> to find out and know about. And I think we'll hear that there are trade-offs and tensions sometimes between these different objectives and goals around economy and poverty, around human health, around animal health, around ecosystems, as well as synergies. I think we'll hear that there are some really major and important opportunities to link science and research to policy and practice, but also that this is not simple and that it is very much imbued by politics of many kinds. Politics in who does what, in whose knowledge counts, in what happens, where and when. So this is the real world. These are some of the features of the real world that we very deliberately put in the title of this symposium. This real world doesn't make One Health any less important, but it does affect, I think, how, how we as scientists, as practitioners, um, as people who care about these challenges, embrace it and take it forward to enable us and the world to prepare for, to mitigate, to prevent and respond to zoonotic diseases and their impacts. So I'm delighted to see you all here, an incredibly diverse audience um, from a great range of disciplines and backgrounds. And I'm looking forward to, to a candid and challenging set of debates and presentations over the next couple of days. <laughs>